Hello guys, welcome to Apple Style Yarns. My name is Naema and today I'll be taking you through how to make this desk pen storage basket. Perfect for keeping your pens. Or if you're like me and you're a crocheter, it's perfect for also keeping your supplies. So if you love crocheting and are passionate about the craft, then you've definitely landed in the right place. Hit the subscribe button and the bell notification so you don't miss out on any of our future crochet videos. So let's get straight on how to make this. So for today's pattern, we'll be using this purple thread. It's a cotton blend, chunky thread, and it uses a size 5 millimeter hook. But what we'll be doing today is we'll be using it as a double thread. So I'll take this and another ball of yarn and then join them together. And I'll use them as a double thread and I'll still use them with the same same 5 millimeter hook so as to keep the tension tight this will help the basket stay firm because the tension will be very tight with that you'll also need your pair of scissors your darning needle to tuck in your tail ends and you'll need stitch markers especially if you're a beginner you'll need stitch markers I personally don't have stitch markers so I usually improvise with these office pins, but they come in handy and they still do the same work perfectly. We'll start off by making a magic ring. So hold the tail end of your threads with your left hand. For me, I'm right-handed, so I will use my less dominant hand to hold the tail ends. Wrap the thread around your fingers. Make sure it crosses, turn to the back. Take your hook, go below the first and Pull up the loop with your second like that and make sure it will give a twist and with this you have your magic ring so we'll be working inside this ring and with that you want to yarn over and pull a loop creating a chain this will count as my first single crochet so what we're going to do next is work 11 more single crochets in this ring to make a total of 12 single crochets so that is our first we'll go in pull up a loop yarn over pull through the two that's our second go inside the ring pull up a loop yarn over pull through two third single crochet go inside the circle pull up a loop yarn over pull through that's our fourth, going to the circle, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. That's our fifth. So I'll make seven more single crochets in this ring. So I've worked my last single crochet and that's how it will be looking like. So after that, after your last single crochet, you want to take this tail end of the magic ring and give it a nice pull. To close up on the circle making it really nice and tight and decent and then how i like to finish it off is i come in this first v so when you give your project you have this little space so not this first one at the base this second this this one at the top but you'll go in from the back so after this first hump when you look at it from the back you have this line and then this little hump the first hump after that first hump, you just push your needle to go inside that space and coming back to the front like that. You want to loop your threads on your hook like that and you want to pull them towards the back. Like that. So make it nice, almost the same tension as the ones before. So you don't make it too tight because that will also, that will be a space we'll be working on at the end of each row. So you want to pull that, make sure the tension is nice and right. Then remove your hook again, go into the space from the front now towards the back, the same, same space. And then you want to yarn over and pull through a loop towards the front like that now you have two of these loops then you'll come in from the back loop that one back into the hook and loop that second one give it a nice pull make sure the tension is nice enough for you to work with 
then we we'll yarn over and pull through both. So this will act as our first single crochet for row two. And that's how we'll be doing it all through the pattern. So now we begin our counts. That will count as our first single crochet. And then inside the same space, we are going to go in and work two more single crochets to make a total of three single crochets in that first space. So that's our first. You'll go back in with your hook and pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through two. That's our second. Go back in, pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through two. Now you have three single crochets in that same space. And then now we're going to work in the next three spaces. So in the next space, we're going to work just one single crochet. In the space after that, another single crochet. And in the next space, another single crochet. So three single crochets. So one, two, three. And then in the fourth space after that, we're going to work three single crochets in the same space. So you'll go in, that's your first single crochet. Go into the same space, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. That's our second single crochet. Go into the same space, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. That's our third single crochet in the same space. And then in the next three spaces, we're going to work single crochet in each of the spaces. So the next space, I'm just going to work one single crochet. In the next space, one single crochet. And in the next space, one single crochet. And then in the next space, which is the fourth space after that, we're going to work three single crochets in the same space. So I'll go in, pull up a loop, pull through two. That's one. In the same space, work another single crochet. In the same space, go in and work your third single crochet. And that, that will be our third corner. Then in the next three spaces, we're going to work single crochets in each space. So that's our first. In the next space, you're going to work a single crochet. And in the next space, which I said, you want to be careful not to make it too tight. That last space, we're going to go in. It's a bit tight. So we're going to go in, pull up a loop, and work your final single crochet for that row and then now we've finished off so we have where we have three single crochets in one space those will be our corners so we'll be having three corners and three sides having completed row two we close off and start off row three the same same way so i'll just give this some a little pull then remove your hook then in your first space or from the back this first hump, this first space. So the first hump, this first space will go in from the back towards the front with your hook. Then you loop your hook, your loops, and pull them towards the back like that. Then just tighten it to give it ample enough tension if you need to give it a pull just give it a pull make sure it has the same tensions as the rest and then you'll remove your hook again going now to the, in the same space but from the front towards the back and pull your working need your working piece of thread make sure it it is below the loop so you have your loops it is below so you'll just hold this down then Yarn over and pull through towards pulling it to the front side. Then you're going to loop this back into your hook and loop that and give it a nice little pull like that, giving it a nice little pull, making sure it you have the correct tension. Then you're going to yarn over and pull through both like that. And then this counts as our first single crochet for row three. And then we're going to go into the same space and work three, two more single crochets. So that's the first one. So I'll yarn over and pull through two. That's our second. And then if you're not sure 
where the start of the row is or where your first V is, this is the right time to put your stitch markers. I don't have a stitch marker. I'm improvising with my office need office clips. So you want to put your stitch marker between your first single crochet and your second. This top V over here, you want to put in your stitch marker so you can know when your row will end. So you can just put it like that and then it won't interfere with anything. And then that's our second single crochet. Then we're going to go into the same space, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. That's our third single crochet. The thing about this pattern is it increases by two. So just to increase the size of our base. So we started off with three and then now in this next row, which is the third row, we're going to increase the three by two on each side. In this beginner row, we had three. In the second row, we'll have five because it will be increasing by two. So after the three single crochets in that space, in the next space, so make sure you don't skip it. So just give your single crochets a push and then that next space, you want to go in there and work a single crochet. In the next space, work a single crochet. That's our second. In the third space, work a single crochet. In the fourth space, work a single crochet. And in the fifth space, work a single crochet. That's our first side. In the sixth space, you want to work three single crochets in the same space. So you go in, pull up a loop. That's our first single crochet. Our second single crochet. Our third single crochet. Then after the three in the next, in our second side, again, five single crochets in the next five spaces. So that's one single crochet in the next space. The second single crochet in the third space third single crochet the fourth space your fourth single crochet in your fifth space your fifth single crochet and in your sixth space you want to work three single crochets in the same space so that's your first the thread will keep on doing that because it's thicker than the hook size but I'll not adjust the hook size because that's what will give this pattern its firmness because I want the tension to be very tight. So that's why. So that's a challenge I'll be having and I'm okay with it. So you have your first single crochet, your second single crochet, and your third single crochet in the same space. Then in the next space, you want to work one single crochet and one single crochet in the next four spaces. So that's our second single crochet, our third single crochet, our fourth single crochet. And then in this final space over here, you don't forget that space, we're going to go in and work our fifth single crochet and we finished off row three and then having put your stitch marker now you know exactly where to go so you just remove it in that space where the stitch marker was you give your loop a pull and then you go from the back towards the front like that loop that in and pull it towards the back pull making sure the tension is right then remove your hook going from the front towards the back pull up another loop now you have two loops one at the back one at the front put them back into your hook and give it a pull like that then you want to yarn over and pull through all the two this counts as our first single crochet for row four and now in the same space, you want to work two more single crochets. So that's our first single crochet. Go into the same space, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. That's our single crochet. So if you need, you want to put your stitch marker in that space just to guide you. 
on where you'll be working in so you'll put your stitch marker and then work one more single crochet in the same space yarn over pull through two you have three single crochets in the same space since in the previous row we had five single crochets in this row we are going to have seven so after your three single crochets in the same space you want to work seven single crochets in the next seven spaces seven single crochets and after your seventh single crochet in the eighth space in the next space you want to go in and work three single crochets in the same space to make your second corner and then after the three single crochets in the same space work seven more single crochets in the next seven spaces and after your seven single seven single crochet in the eight in the next space which is the eighth space after that you want to work three single crochets in the same space and after that you want to work your seven last single crochets in your on your third side then don't forget your last space over here and also just remember to be keeping count so one two three four five six so you need to go into this final seven space so you go in it's normally a bit tighter than the rest pull up a loop yarn over pull through two and then now we want to close off the circle so where you have your stitch marker you just remove it and then go into this go into that space and finish off how we normally hold and that's how we'll be increasing up until we have enough sides for the base of your basket so from here that's our first single crochet in the same space you're going to work two more single crochets to make a total of three in the previous row we had seven single crochets in this row we're going to have nine and that's how we'll be increasing with, with each row so you go from nine to eleven to thirteen to fifteen depending on how big you want your base to be so i'll work my nine single crochets across and after the ninth in the tenth space after that you want to work three single crochets in the same space And then after the three single crochets in the same space we work nine single crochets in each of the next nine spaces and in the next space after that which is your tenth space we want to work three single crochets in the same space one two and three and then after that you work your last side so nine single crochets all the way to the end you have worked your nine single crochets and then we close off that row now for this row this is our first single crochet in the same space we're going to work two more single crochets so you have your first your second and your third single crochet and then since we worked on our previous row we worked nine single crochets in the nine spaces in this row we're going to work 11 so after my 11th single crochet in the next space which is my 12th space i'm going to work three single crochets in the same space and then 11 more single crochets in the second side after your 11th single crochet in the next space which is the 12th you want to work three single crochets in the same space and after that you want to work 11 single crochets in your final third side and you have your 11th single crochet and then now we're going to close off after this row i've achieved 13 13.5 that is 5.5 inches i'm okay with that size if you need it to go bigger just continue up until you have 
the size that you require again just continue 11 13 15 17 it will be increasing with two as you go up until you have your required base size having achieved the correct base size for me after your 11th single crochet you want to come to your first piece your first v of the row going from the back towards the front pull up this loop hook up pull up that loop towards the back and then mm -hmm. what you want to do is give it a nice little pull like that and then what we want to work right now is a row of single crochets just to define the end of our base so with that on my hook i'll just go into the same space so with that on my hook go into the same space pull up a loop and work a slip stitch through that first loop you want to pull through that so this will be your first so you want to give that you want to put your stitch marker over there so you don't forget that space so that will be your first stitch and then now we're going to be working slip stitches across so just yarn over pull through that and pull, pull through the loop So each space gets one slip stitch including the corners so since we are beginning to go up we will not be increasing so what you end up having is two rows of this so you at the bottom of the base which is our right side this will be our wrong side so this will be on the inside this will be the outside of the basket so you have these rows of V's and when you look at it from again the top you have these rows of V's. So this will be to define the bottom then we'll be working on these top ones. So you want to continue with your single with your slip stitches all across till we come back to where our stitch marker is. I'm at the end of the row and I've worked my single my slip stitch over there and then with this last space don't forget it remember you used to go inside here so we'll just go that last space and pull up a stitch it will be a bit tighter than the rest that's okay and that's your final slip stitch and then we need to close it up but we'll not close it up in this space since this is where we began we will not be working in this lower row since we are going up we'll be working in this upper row so you have where your stitch marker is so there is this and then now this top one after that the first v on the top row not this bottom one right here so what i'll do is since we'll be working single crochets i'll just pull that up in this first space I'll go in from the back to the front this is where I remove my stitch marker then I'll loop that and pull it towards the top to close off that row like that and to begin off now our first row of the body so we'll pull it like that from the front towards the back I'll pull another loop then put both loops on my hook and then work a single crochet then we begin our row our first row for the body so this pattern is just a single crochet but a fancy single crochet so I'll go into this first one 
the top, the one that was at the front. So I'll go below that first one, and then go into the next space. This will be working. Will be working in this viz like that, the top viz like that. So you'll be going, we'll be going inside each V and pulling up our loop like that. And then we'll be left with our bottom V just to give our base a more defined look. So how we work our pattern now is I'll go through this first one like that, and then go to the next space, which is our V. Pull up a loop, having three loops on our hook ideally, yarn over, pull through all the three. And then go through the space, right where the, where the loop comes from, inside that space. We're going to go inside there and in the next V. And then pull up a loop. So we have three loops on our hook and over pull through all the three. And that's how our pattern will be working. So you go the last stitch, go through it where the thread comes from and then go in to the next place and pull up a loop, three loops on your hook and over pull through all the three. We'll do that again through the loop and inside the next space, which is the V space, pull up a loop and over pull through three. So it's a pretty simple pattern and that's how we'll be working our body to give us a nice print for our basket. So I'll continue like that all the way around. So that's how we're looking like. So continue and I'll meet you at the end of row one of our body. So I'm at the end of the row. So I'll finish up on the last pattern. And at this point, there is this, this part, it is this, and this, it makes a V. So we'll want to work through that as our last V just to close it up and prevent it from hanging low. So I'll go the same, same way through that. And then I'll go first to the front one. You have to be careful. So I'll just go through the front one and then loop on the second one. And that's how it would be looking like. So you've looped on both of them. So we've looped on both of them. And then you're going to yarn over, pull through that. Have three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through all the three. Like that. So that's how we'll be looking like. And that's only at the beginning because now that way you've closed off and it's looking nice and decent. Then with that, you've realized we are at the end. So what you're going to do is close off the close off and start a new row. So I'll just remove my hook. This is our first one. So you'll go from the back towards the front, take up your loop and pull it towards the back to close off like that and remember we'll be working in this space so you want to make it you want to give it enough allowance enough tension to be able to go through it so i'll pull it a little bit don't also make it too loose then from the front towards the back and then you will loop your hook and pull up a loop to the front like that. Now you have one loop at the back and one loop at the front. Put them back on your hook. Give it a nice little pull like that. Then a twist, yarn over, pull through 
both and that's our first one and it does count as our first one so we'll go through the you want to look at it the first the first the the loop that was at the front so you want to look at it like that you will go through that space through the space where the thread comes from you want to make sure you go through that space and then go in the next space and pull up a loop then you'll have three loops on your hook yarn over pull through all the three and then in your the last stitch here you'll go through the same space and then into the next space pull up yarn over pull up a loop three loops on your hook yarn over pull through all the three go through the next pull up a loop three loops on your hook like that and with that it's a repeat all the way round And remember our tail end now is a perfect time to tuck it in because once we start coming up it will be a bit difficult to maneuver your hand inside here to tuck in those tail ends I've already tucked mine in so you just want to continue with the same pattern and I'll meet you at the end of this row just to show you how we close off on this second row of our body I'm at the end of row two of the body so I'll just work my last pattern in that last space so when you look at it from the back we have that we have this V so you'll be going through only the top like that loop your hooks pull it to the back like that and then coming in from the front towards the back the same space loop that in and pull it to the front now you have a front loop and a back one and give it a nice pull make sure the tension is right then yarn over and pull through both and from here henceforth is a repeat all the way so we'll work on our last one and then you can continue up until you have enough length for your body of your basket so in that in the front loop where the thread comes from right there you want to go through that space and then after you go through that space you go into the next space and pull up a loop you'll have three loops on your hook yarn over pull through all the three and then in our last stitch right here we'll go through that and then through the next space pull up a loop now you have three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through all the three. In our last space, in our last stitch, right here, through it and into the next space and pull up a loop, three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through all the three. So you want to continue with the same all the way round. And I'll show you how we're looking like at the end of row 3. This is how we're looking like at the end of row 3. So it is slowly beginning to take shape. That's how the side looks like. So we'll close off our row 3 of the body the same, same way we do. So at the top, our first V, which is this first one. When you look at it from the side, you'll be going only on the top part. From the back towards the front mm -hmm. 
and then from the front towards the back pull up a loop then loop both to the hook you have your first single crochet pull through both and then going through the first one and into the next space pull up a loop three loops on your hook yarn over pull through all the three in your last the last stitch go through it and into the next place three loops on your hook and over pull through all the three last stitch go through it and into the next place pull up a loop three loops on your hook and over pull through all the three and it's a repeat all the way to the end of the row so i'll just continue a few more rows up until i have enough length so after the third row we have four centimeters for the body that is 1.75 inches so i think i'll work six more rows this being row four i'll work row four up until row nine and see how much length i'll have attained because i'm looking at getting to 12 centimeters height and I'll be fine with that. So just continue also up until you have enough length for your for your body size. And then I'll meet you at the end so we can finish off together. So I'm at the end of row 9 and that's how we're looking like. Using the size of a hook, that's how it will be like. So we'll stop at row 9. So how we finish off is the same way I'll go work my last pattern in this last space don't forget that space it's a bit tight then from here what I'll do I'll just go into that first space right here this first V with my loop still on my hook I'll just go into that space and work a slip stitch to close off row 9 and then from here what I want to do is work a row of slip stitch all around just to define that top part so I've worked my first slip stitch over there to close off so I'll chain one and work slip stitches all around so the next space I'll just work a slip stitch In the next space another slip stitch so you go in pull up a loop pull it through that space and pull it through that one loop So we'll just continue the same all the way around and I'll meet you at the end of the row so we can close off our pattern. So I'm at the end and I'll work my last slip stitch in that final space. And then after here what I'll do is I'll just give my thread a little allowance and cut it from there. Then I'll give this a pull. I'll use a smaller needle for this so I can go in with ease in our first where we chained one at the beginning of the row this first V after the last space this first V that we have over here I'll go in from the back towards the front and loop that thread and pull it towards the back like that and then come in again in the same space where the thread comes from so i'll go in from the bottom like that and then 
loop it again and pull it towards that direction like that so it what you end up having is a seamless finish and then we will tuck this in so since it being like that i'll just in this space over here where the tail ends the next space over here i'll just come in from the back and pull it towards the back and then i'll tuck it in from there it will be simple like that that way you'll have a seamless joint at the top i'll just take this tail end and loop it a couple of times before i tuck it in using my darning needle just to hide it inside there after that you just go in with your this is where your darning needle comes in so you want to go inside the spaces like this and hide the tail end so i'll just Go inside the space so you are in between the pattern so you want to hide the thread inside the pattern like that I think that should be enough to hide one tail end and then you just pass that thread through the eye and then pull the front and give it a nice pull and there you've hidden that over there and then I have my second one I'll hide it in this other I'll hide it on this other side so this one I'll just the same thing but on the opposite direction and your storage basket is done but the bigger it is the more defined the shape will be for mine it's okay that's how we're looking like that's how the sides are looking like and i'm happy with the outcome if you've made it to the end of the video do give us a thumbs up and leave us a comment in the comment section below on how you found the part was it simple and tag us on our instagram if you manage to make such also do consider subscribing and hitting on the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of our future crochet videos so till next time bye